Hey, uh, again, uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to be with you this morning. Did about uh, 27 years as a U.S. Army, and uh, I've been teaching high school for the last uh, seven years. And uh, it's fortunate that I'm able to interface with young men and women uh, from 42 different countries, and they uh, 38 different languages are spoken our hallways. So I've got a very, very unique challenge, uh, but I embrace it every single day. Uh, I'm a father of three, um, three grandkids. And, uh, you know, I, I live every day like it's my last day. You know, what, so, what advice would you give some of our students, uh, even your older brother here a little bit, uh, about, you know, I, I didn't get into a good, very good intro, and I apologize, 27 years, uh, U.S. Marine. I mean, your journey is quite remarkable. I'm not just speaking that as a brother, but, you know, go from enlisted men to being selected lieutenant colonel and saying, I, I really got to step away as the video talked about the love of your family. But you also travel the country quite a bit and speak a message to various uh, organizations, schools, uh, corporate, and I don't know how you find time to do that, my friend, but uh, what, what's some of the message that you share with some of the people that you interface with that you think is important? That maybe yes, absolutely. Uh, can everybody can hear me? Yeah, give me a thumbs up if you can hear Sean, please. Give him a thumbs up. There you go. It looks like everybody's thumbs up can hear you. Okay, yeah. I am I'm fortunate enough. Uh, first thing I, I would uh, tell each and every one of you is that uh, each and every one of you have a, a, a set of skills, a set of talents, maybe that you haven't recognized that you have within you. And I believe every young man, young woman uh, has these gifts and talents. Um, I was blessed to, to get some certain talents from the Lord. I'm not real good with mechanical things. I'm not real good with my brother would tell you. I'm not real good at fixing things. Uh, but the, the good Lord gave me the opportunity, gave me some gifts, uh, my ability to lead, teach, and inspire other people to be able to accomplish what no others ever thought they could do. And so that's a huge blessing. It can be a curse at times. So I speak in different venues. I speak to businesses. I'll speak to uh, military, I'll speak to uh, Christian organizations, I get the opportunity to speak to principals and superintendents and teachers. But I guess my real love and passion is speaking to youth. So this day is extremely special for me, because any time that I can interface with young men, I, I know there's no, uh, we don't have any ladies, is there any ladies in class? Uh, our office staff, Mrs. Anderson. Mrs. Anderson, nice to meet you, I like your energy. Um, anytime I get the opportunity to address a group, whether it's five or 500, uh, I jump at the opportunity because I truly believe uh, DeAndre and Xavier, uh, you guys, these are the future of this country. And uh, I don't, so yesterday I had the opportunity to uh, get interviewed by a journalism class. And one of the questions was, what would you leave us young millennial students as we embark upon our journey of life. And the first thing I told them was, number one, you're at the beginning of your movie. So, DeAndre, uh, you might say your name, DeAndre, is that right? Mm -hmm. DeAndre, you're at the beginning of your movie. And what I mean by that is you're at the beginning of your life. My brother, Phil, you know him and you know me. Hey, we're towards the end of our movie of life. And I don't mean that in a, in a morbid way. You guys got a, you guys, Xavier, you guys got a long life to live, okay? And regardless of the challenges and uh, things that you've had to overcome, you're still at the beginning of your movie. And I told these young students, you can't allow other people to write your script. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. David, does that make sense? You don't want anybody else writing your movie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are going to write a movie. Xavier, would your movie be worth watching? I think so. But you, you got, you're the one that gets to be the, produ uh, the producer, I guess, Phil. He gets to be the director. Yeah. Uh, DeAndre, you get to be the director of your, of your film. And that's your life. And what happens, I believe, and I know I'm uh, controlling the mic here, Phil, but what yeah. happens, a lot of youth in America, we're more content with going with the herd that's going in the wrong direction than taking our own path and doing the right thing. It's hard to do the right thing by yourself. Um, so I, I interface, you guys saw the video, what you think of the video, uh, DeAndre, you play sports or not? Play basketball a little bit. Yeah, play hoops a little bit, okay. But, 
you don't, you don't have to be a football player to get what, what, what I've been able to do there. As you can see, my school is just a very, it's a melting pot of different kids from all over, all over the world, actually. And so you ask what fill I can give to these young men and uh, obviously uh, your office personnel there. This is, a, this is a great opportunity. But first thing I told them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about three things that you all can control every day. David, nice to meet you. Uh, how do you pronounce your last name, David? Dillinger. Okay. Um, good to see you there. I, I think you guys got to realize that you guys control, and I'm going to call it my ace. It'll be real easy to remember. You guys play card. Anybody ever play card? My brother and I played cards as kids growing up. But ace, okay. Just remember the acronym ACE, A-C-E. And I like to do things simplified. I was a U.S. Marine. But the bottom line is, if you take this acronym that I use, and I call it my ACE, it's something that you control every day. So the A stands for your attitude. Now, Xavier, would you agree that you control your attitude every single day you get up? Yes. yes. Absolutely. And life, life is going to throw a lot of curveballs at you, isn't it, David? Life throws a lot of curveballs at us, okay? But here's the deal. You get to choose, to me, the most powerful gift in the world is to choose your attitude every single day. And at the end of the day, when life is really about 10% uh, of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. And how you react to it is your attitude. So one of those things that I would, I would basically leave with you all is you get to choose your attitude, good, bad, or indifferent, every day. And it speaks volumes that you guys are on this virtual uh, morning show here on Friday. And you're up when you could very well probably have your feet up doing something else. But it speaks volumes to that, hey, you want, you want to get better. And I have a sign in my office, um, Xavier, and it says you're either getting better or you're getting worse. And so my big thing is is that it's your attitude that controls that. The second thing is, is your commitment level to everything you do. That C, right? We talk about that C. And the commitment level, whether it be right now, your distant learning, uh, your commitment level in your community, your commitment level personally, okay? What are the commit? How committed are you in the academia side or your job? or your family. You get to control your commitment level. And, I, and the reason I share the ACE with you is that these are things you can control. And I think a lot of times, Phil, Mr. Quinlan, to you gentlemen, is we always are always worried about what other people are doing. Amen. So Amen. it's easy to, for us to focus our attention on maybe not what we're doing. And if we would take that time and focus on, hey, my attitude, my commitment level, and then E stands for effort level. You know, you guys are going to do some unique things, and I'm going to brag about my brother. You guys are blessed due to the fact I know how good he is, and I'm not saying it because he's my brother. I, I would want my my children, his nieces and nephews, uh, obviously my kids, uh, to be under his leadership because he gets it. He can, hey, DeAndre, he cares about you. I'm telling you right now, Xavier, he cares about you. Okay? I guarantee it. By the end of the year or the end of the semester, you're going to say, wow, I have never had a person – that cares about me, but he's going to hold the standard because um, he wants to see you be successful. Um, so I, I, I started off my class yesterday, Phil, and the course yeah. question was, name one person in your life, uh, and I'm going to ask these few young men this, has had a severe uh, impact on your life. And it could be a woman, it could be a male. And so some of the kids, share, and I had the kids share this, and I also said, what qualities do they possess? that reflect serving and so the first girl said uh, i'm from thailand she told you everybody she's from burma and she's from thailand and she admired her grandmother and she never understood why her grandmother would leave the refugee camp every day um well they didn't have any money for medicine so the grandmother would go up into the mountains and this girl's six years old telling the story now she's 15. her grandmother would go up into the mountains phil and get roots leaves wow. and she would make medicine and, and so when everybody in the class was sharing their story, a lot of my kids are from America, they were complaining about certain things, and they heard the story of this young girl living in a refugee camp, uh, cold, wet, rainy, and they were there for 10 years, now she's here in America, and she really appreciates it. But um, everybody got to share a little bit about someone they, they admired and why they admired them, and what do you think their legacy would be? And so... I think you got to have a reason to get up every morning, David. Bryce, I think you got to have a reason to get up every morning. Uh, we, we got that purpose. And uh, there's uh, – so I told our kids yesterday when Phil, uh, my brother, asked me to 
this morning with you all, what can I leave with them? Hey, you control your attitude, you control your commitment level, also control your effort level. But more importantly, you got to have a purpose. So my purpose is in about a half hour, I'm going to have 35 young men and women in my classroom. And that happens to be my purpose. And my purpose is that uh, I wake up every morning thinking somebody's going to do something great and that someone's me. And now you say, well, you're not great, whatever. You know what, though? That's my attitude. My attitude is I'm getting up every day uh, to do something, and I'm going to impact young men and young women so they can go forth and serve the community and be better citizens. That's what I want. My, my students will always say uh, Major Quinlan wants us to be good, informed citizens that contribute to society, as does my brother. And so, but my thing is you got to know what your purpose is. Um, I asked, I asked a uh, question, Bill, who in my class yesterday, all in classes, uh, yeah. been told that they can't achieve something. And pretty much 95% of the class's hand went up. And wow. so um, I would ask the same question to young men uh, today. And my brother and I have been told what we can't do. So I first I share my story. Uh, I was a senior, uh, DeAndre, and I was a pretty good athlete. And uh, my senior year in high school, I got in a car accident. And uh, so I'm telling, my, yeah, I'm telling my story to my students. And I shattered my hip in 16 places. My brother was there the night I did it. And um, I was in, in the hospital for 60 days. And the doctor told me, David and Xavier, the doctor told me that you're never going to uh, walk without a lift. You'll never run again. And you may be able to play a mile game of golf. So, 27 years in the Marines later, six marathons later, 25 triathlons later, football, you mean that I did it. Now, had I listened to, David, if I listened to that, that doctor and, and listened to, say, his, and it, it, nothing against the doctor. He's just saying, in cases like this, this is what he's seen. But what happens is, uh, DeAndre, they don't know what's in your heart. They don't know how hard you can work. They know one can gauge the will. Would you, you agree, Xavier? Yeah. Nobody can gauge your will. That's what I always tell, you know, tell my players. I mean, we got better every, every season. We got better. We were the worst football team in the state of Iowa. You know, we were 2-0 and all for the first time in 50 years, and we started turning things around. I got the young men to believe in the team, but really believe in the family. Because 46 of my 48 players didn't have fathers. So when you got 46 and then six of my uh, players' dads were in, uh, incarcerated, and I had one mother incarcerated. And so we had a lot of, uh, just a lot of challenges in my school. But our football team was a safe haven. Our practices, our dinners, our, our, I, took, I took them to Colorado. 13, we, we took a train to Colorado for 13 hours. We uh, went to the Denver Broncos. The Denver Nuggets brought us in. Uh, the Colorado Avalanche brought us in. We got to Whitewater Raft. So we did a lot of things. And, I was listening to my brother talking about you guys possibly getting to go on a trip uh, to Grand Rapids. Um, he's going to show you things that are attainable throughout your year with him or the next couple of years that if you're willing to pay the price, you can actually be extremely successful. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the bottom line is you can't let anybody break your spirit, man. i tell you right now, my brother would tell you, I'm one of those kind of guys that I take on the world. And that's always been my attitude. And I've always been, I've, I've always been the underdog. I've always had people tell me what I can do. The next thing you know, they're like, man, how did you do that? Well, first of all, my relationship with Christ has been by the, my saving grace. But uh, the Lord has put a lot of spirit and fire in me, and he expects me to use my gifts. So I'm expecting you guys throughout this school year is to find what those gifts are and talents. And, you know, you got to ask yourself, Xavier or David or DeAndre, some of the other kids that can't see the photos, but you got to ask yourself, if I could do something, you know, right now in your head, what would it be? What would that, that love be? And then you guys have to put a plan together and you have to go after it. And you got guys like my father and people that you do academy that will help remove the obstacles that will afford you the opportunity to achieve those goals. And you got to put the goals down, guys. you got to write them down. Yeah, and good point. Do. Amen. And it, you got to write the goals down because I make my students, you know, I have 160 students, when they write their goals down, then they sign their name, they get it, and then we periodically review it. So we don't just write them down and say, okay, we're good for the year. But I'm telling you, even if it's two or three things, okay, I'm telling you right now 
there's a thing that you couldn't, DeAndre, there's anything you can't do, David, there's anything you can't do, Xavier. There's nothing you guys can't accomplish if you're willing to pay the price. You got people in your corner, like my brother. I know, I know who he is. I know what he's about. We both, we both do this because we love the students. I don't do this for my administrators. I don't do this for. Uh, I do it for the young men and women that I'm privileged to teach. Um, but so my message to them is: never let anybody break your spirit. Okay, you control your attitude, your commitment level, your effort level every single day. Um, I'm sorry if I took a long time with that. No, you keep going, Sean. So um, the next thing. I would like to talk about too is that you got to have some fundamental principles that you live by. Okay. And my brother and I had these five principles that I've used and my brother shared with me in a reading years and years ago, probably when I was in my late twenties. And there's five fundamental principles that I use that I try to apply in all areas of my life. So I'm going to share those five fundamental principles with you because I think if you strive for these principles, and consciously every single day strive for these, that uh, this can definitely help you attain or achieve any goal any, and overcome any obstacle that's been put in your path. Every one of you got a story. David's got a story, David's got a story, David's got a story, brother's got a story. And every one of our stories are broken at one time or another. The bottom line is we got to we got to put that in our rear view mirror and we, and we got to go forward. Today, you guys got a brand new day. You can't do anything about anything in your past. So now we focus from today forward. And the first principle, you can write this down. I'm not even going to charge my brother for this. The first principle is a strong commitment to excellence. So you got to commit to excellence in everything you do. And, I, and it's hard, but it's a, it's a little things you do every day. Okay. So the number one principle to be number one or be successful is to commit to excellence. And you all know what excellence is. And we're going to fall short. But I, if you strive for it and you start to see improvement, you start to get confidence. And when you get confidence, you start to believe. And when you we start to believe, you don't worry about hope anymore. Okay? Good Nothing's worse than someone that doesn't even have hope. So, so the second thing is be good at the fundamentals. So if you're, I mean, let's say academically, be good at the fundamentals. You know, being able to read. Probably one of my greatest strengths is my ability to read. And uh, not that I'm a great reader, is that I read all the time because I want to know more. So you got to have good fundamentals to be successful in life. And I don't care if it's financial fundamentals. I don't care if it's relationship fundamentals, uh, professional fundamentals, or math, science, history. Even the stuff we don't like to do sometimes, we got to try to do the best we can to learn the fundamentals. That's number two. So... The first one is commit to excellence. The second one is uh, be fundamentally sound. I call it fundamentally sound. Be good at the basics. Really, it's the basics. It's really the basics. The third thing is for young men, and it's hard for men in general, is take care of the little things. If you can take care of the little things, yeah, I call it attention to detail. So you can, attention to detail is you, you take care of the little things. And you focus on the little things because a lot of people don't want to do little things, but that's what makes you successful. It's, it's little things that you do every single day is how you're going to get better. You know, and you got to have you got to have those goals right in front of you. So I want you to write your goals down, whether it's your your academic goals, your financial goals, your future goals, where you want to be a year from now, two years from now, and then you got to put them up somewhere where you can see them. I gotta see and put them in my car. I gotta put them on my mirror. I put them in my in my phone. And you gotta see those goals every day. And it's a constant reminder. My brother, I don't know if he's giving his team the bracelet to say trust the plan. Um, but you gotta trust the plan. And you think about if you say trust the plan, that's the key. If it's a faith, if it's a belief, then you can do it. You can faith. It's a belief when you can't really touch it or see it, but you believe it, you can do it. And so you have that faith, trust the plan. So. The first one is, getting back to my five principles, the first one is to make the next excellence in everything you do. Number two, be fundamentally sound in everything that you do uh, in your personal life, your professional life, in your community. Number three, is attention to detail. 
We don't like to do the little things, but the little things is what what will actually make you. It takes to our average and makes you good, it takes better, it makes you great. So you got to do a little things, and then um, number four is pride and ownership. I call it pride and ownership. And pride and ownership is take pride in the everything you do. Take pride in everything, everything you do. Uh, in the classroom, all the classroom, take pride. Like a lot of you guys like to dress up, I guarantee you dress up, whatever. Take pride in how you look. When you go out in public, you take pride, okay? Well, take the same kind of pride. Or you have a vehicle. If I got a vehicle, if I got a car, whatever, I'm sure they try to take care of it, right? Take good pride in it. Well, that's no different in everything you do in life. If you take pride in every area of your life, you can be successful. You know, and that's a, I think it's extremely important that you're proud of what you are and who you are. Um, but again, it takes, but the last one is discipline. You got to have the discipline. It, I would say the most common ingredient, it's not a bad thing, uh, but we all like to say that we hear the word discipline right away. We go, I don't like that. The big thing is, I would say the number one quality that successful people possess that maybe people that are that don't have the same success is self-discipline. So if you commit to excellence, you're good at the fundamentals, you take great pride in what you do, you do the little things, and you have good self-discipline, those five principles right there, I guarantee you, if you apply it, you get the pilot. It's not about just writing it down, you got to start to try to live it. But if you have accountability partner, DeAndre, that's giving you Hey, you know what? Xavier's my accountability partner. Dave is my accountability partner. Mr. Quinlan's my accountability partner. Um, you two can, you know, good point. Achieve, you know, you can achieve those dreams and goals and aspirations uh, that you all want to. That maybe a lot of you, I don't know, a lot of my students at times don't think they're capable of doing some things. And um, I don't buy into that because a lot of my students have been told that uh, you're not going to achieve anything in this world. You're, you're always going to be here. And I tell them not to buy into that narrative. I'm sure my brother will tell you the same thing. Yeah. You don't buy into that narrative, you know? Well, I guess if you bought into that narrative, or we all bought into that narrative, you know, uh, look at our pathway, we wouldn't be where we're at, or maybe you know, all the principles you laid out are so, so, so vital. vital. So, hey, hey, Sean, Sean uh, uh, I, I, I want to open the floor if I can, because, man, I wrote your principles down from ACE to the five components of leadership. And these are things you and I talk about all the time. And, uh, more importantly, you've lived that. And we uh, it's our privilege to not only sit here interface with you virtually, but just give a strong and powerful message. Uh, and I know right now a lot of our gentlemen and ladies who are tuned in, and keep in mind, Sean, also, this is platforms up on YouTube for our other virtual learners who may not be able to make it today can tune in and watch too. So there's a little bit larger audience too out there. But I'd like gentlemen and ladies to turn it over to any of you that may have a particular question. Um, that gentleman, I uh, know he's the door. He, uh, Brian, could you have them all wait out there for a second? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you. So go ahead, guys. I'd like to open up the floor to anybody here in the room who would like to uh, throw a question. And so I know you got to get to class here soon, but. No, I'm all ears. I'm, I mean, this is a awesome. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, Somebody take over a question. Yes. Sean, I've got Logan. He's hiding uh, behind the screen here, Logan. He's, uh, he's in Cairo, Egypt. And so yep. he's got like a little five second delay here, but uh, I'm sure he may have some questions. Um, the other Phil Quinlan there is uh, our good friend Kyle Martin, who's our tech, where you met Kyle, right? Yep. Okay. And he's in the other room here, leaning and listening, so it's great to have him. And Bryce uh, is joining us. Uh, so go ahead, guys. Gail, does anybody have a question for Sean? Uh, this is a good time to throw it out there. I don't really have a question. All I can say is I respect what you say and that uh, thank you for your services. Yeah, you know, uh, I appreciate that, uh, Xavier, is, is that obviously there's something I chose to do. You know, it's, it was a very tough, tough, tough uh, business, 27 years being away from your family. But uh, when I look at young men like yourself, when I look at DeAndre there, I look at David, I look at Logan, and I look at uh, my brother trying to, you know, um, him and I call it uh, chase our dreams. And cash shadows and help you know, use. Um, I want you guys to understand that uh, we do. We he does what he does. I do what I did in the military. We did it for you all, so that you guys are the our legacy. You're the ones that are going to 
carry the legacy on. You get some of you have ran track before you hand the baton off, right? Well, my brother and I, you know, we're going to hand the baton off uh, to our kids, to our students, and uh, Xavier, uh, David, Logan, and DeAndre. Um, haven't got a chance to meet you. I will meet you because I'm one of those kind of guys that I come home and my brother will bring you into class and uh, be able to take the time to meet you. Good. So thank you for that comment there, Xavier. Very nice. No thank problem. You. Anybody else want to weigh in? Any question, comment? Uh, you know, before we even weigh in, I just uh, Sean, you're our first of the year virtual guest. I think it's went fabulous so far. So I uh, really appreciate you carving out some time for us. But well, you know, and I'll do a better job next time with the better job. Uh, We're my, just... brother, my brother's the, <laughs> uh, the computer guy and the audio. I should have had this stuff set up. Hey, Dan, do you have a question? Or are you good? No, no, all right. But, but thank, thank you. you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and here's, here's my one I, I want to do, Phil, is I want to send some things uh, that I do with my kids. I want to send them to, but I'm going to personalize it. So if you could send me a list of the, the young men today, I want to yeah. send a care package for each one of these guys. Yeah, uh, be awesome. as, my, as my thank you for what you guys are doing. I'm telling you what, you guys are my kind of people. Okay, when the chips are down and you're up against it and everybody's giving up on you. Um, you guys saw the video, correct? Yeah, saw yeah. The we, saw, we showed the video before you started, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, look at the you're watching today. Yeah, hey, did you see the? Did you see uh, uh, Devin? Well, Devin came in yesterday, Phil, or today, yesterday in class. Did he really? Um, and Devin yeah. just graduated from the United States Marine Corps, and Sean, you wow. pulled out there to see him, and you talk about right. something you won't tell uh, our hey, audience. There's Logan. There's Logan. Logan, Logan, Logan click on there again, Logan. Click on there again. I think Logan, you did that. I can't control that, but hey, Logan, could you weigh in? Logan, throw a question at him halfway around the world. Come on. Question count, Logan. You got that board. Do you have any, have you learned any other languages? No, that's uh, you know what, that's a great question, Logan. Logan's question is that if I learned. No, I mean, we got immersed in uh, Arabic, uh, before we left it, uh, we call it Arabic uh, immersion classes. So anytime that we went into different countries, they would do like a 30 day immersion of just the basic uh, communication. Uh, it's uh, phrases that you might use, but I'll be honest with you, my intellect level, uh, just trying to get the guys ready to go into a foreign country. It was hard enough to so try to add a language, but I would highly recommend if you uh, have the aptitude and, and you have the, uh, the discipline. I think it's, you know, do you speak, do you speak uh, Arabic, Logan? Uh, I'm still learning, but I'm working on it. Quran, stuff like that, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, he's always constantly saying his mom does a beautiful job sh uh, sharing not only imagery, but just the culture uh, of the Egyptian culture. It's amazing. amazing. So, uh, David, and David, how about, how about you? you? You're, you're, you're a hoopster on the weekend, weekend, David. You know, you're, you're on this basketball team, plays down in Grand Rapids a lot. Uh, uh, you know, this little sports metaphor that Sean shared. Any questions? I'd have to put you on the spot, but David, do you have anything? That's okay if you don't. Hey. Thank you for the service. Yeah, do you, 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 are you a one guard? Are you playing the point or do you play the two, two guard or what do you play? I play point guard. The point guard. Well, you know what? That's what the leaders play, right? You get, you get to control the floor. You get to control the players. It's good. That's good. Yeah, hey, I tell you, my, uh, my brother was a basketball coach. He probably didn't tell you guys, but he, he took a team to the state finals, boys. He was an assistant coach, and then the girls turned a program around. But he knows a lot about basketball, so I think it's great. Can't play it for beans. That's what my brother does, so. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, brother, you, brother. you got to check off. Uh, I just want to wrap up by saying thank you. I'm proud of you. Uh, not only as a brother, but uh, just, uh, just as, as a human, human being and reaching out, out to our youth, uh, you're inspiring and your message will, um, you know, just continue to resonate to a lot of us here today. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call later on. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk, talk later. So, and we do uh, after action points because I know I just talked to myself. Uh, beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Right. 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 Looking forward to meeting guys. I got Kirby Gilson and uh, Curry Manis that can be guests for you as well. So. Talk to him. Let's let's work that happen. And uh, everybody else stay in the line. We're gonna just say goodbye, to Sean. And I want everybody to stay in the line for a moment. Okay. So take care, Sean. All right. See you, buddy. Uh, thank, right, thank you. you. Awesome. Hey, hey folks. Uh, I want to make his wrap up. Uh, uh, hope you enjoyed a little guest speaker. Uh, he he speaks. That's just true. He's genuine. So. There's so much more to them too behind that. So I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I uh, hope the opportunity uh, to learn from that. And even all the ones we have aligned for us have different uh, ways of just looking at life. So uh, next week has been established, but we're looking at Paula from 
Beirut, Lebanon, which is not too far from you, Logan. Uh, she's committed to joining us. So Paul is a teacher in American school in Beirut, Lebanon, along the Mediterranean Sea. So she's agreed to kind of tune in and listen to us. That's pretty cool. So um, anybody else have anything to weigh in? Remember, our prize is next week, Tuesday. The entire school is going. So more details will come in our email to you today. I uh, just got some of them last night, so I'll share more with you. And we'll love to have virtual students are also welcome to attend, and we'll get more details on that. Anybody else have anything to weigh in before we say sign off? No. No. No go, says the Andre and his neighbor. That's cool. Well, I want all of you have a blessed weekend. Let's keep, uh, keep in touch. As we always say, stay connected. Uh, trust the plan. And uh, we'll keep in touch with emails. So check your email later today. Logan, I need you to stay on the line. Everybody else can check off and have a great day. Have a great weekend, everybody. You too. Take care.